Wouldn't you know it, Microsoft have dropped something quite exciting into my tenant and I couldn't wait to share it with you. You'll recall a few videos ago, I showed you the Microsoft Syntex archive feature, which is absolutely wonderful. I've been itching to be able to try out the backup and restore feature, but it wasn't there. Now it is, and I want to go through it with you. Let's take a look at this exciting new preview feature together. It's coming up. So just like the archive feature that we've done in a previous video, the backup feature can be found in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center at admin.microsoft.com. We need to go to Setup and scroll down to the section which is called Files and Content, Use Content AI with Microsoft Syntax. And once in here, Remember that you will need a, an Azure subscription to be set up. Uh, if you don't have one, then you won't be able to, to do this part. You'll have to set one up. And here we go to manage Microsoft Syntex. And hooray, I've not only got archive in preview now, I have backup in preview also. So let's go in and take a look and see what it's going to do for us. This has been a long time coming from Microsoft. I'm actually quite amazed that it's taken this long for this feature to become available in Microsoft 365. You can see it wasn't quite the fastest there, but uh, it got into the flyout menu eventually. So what is it going to do? We can protect our organization's content from data inaccessibility events, such as ransomware attack, accidental deletions, etc., by providing customers with ways to back up and recover their data across multiple services, such as OneDrive, Exchange, SharePoint, for up to a year. Awesome, and there's a learn more about Microsoft 365 backup. We will certainly grab that and take a look and we can put that information into uh, the description of the video for you to take a look yourself. So there it is. Okay, so we can see the status of backup is it's turned off at the moment. So we are going to go ahead and turn it on. We've got some uh, information here. By turning on the backup, we're going to make Microsoft 365 backup available on SharePoint sites, Exchange, and OneDrive accounts. And you can start backing up your critical data using the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And as ever, by enabling, you're accepting the terms of service. So make sure that you read and understand those terms of service. We might just grab those and put those in the description for you as well. Okay, I'm going to go and click on to save now. It's saving that for me now. And I'm excited to be able to start using M365 Backup, I must admit. This isn't very fast, is it? Uh, hopefully this process will get a little more streamlined as it gets out of preview, but uh, it is quite on the slow side. So there we go. That actually took a good minute to save, but we can see that it is now turned on and we can now go right to M365 backup from this link here. Where is that going to take us, I wonder? I see, and there's a new section under settings in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So, Microsoft 365 backup, and what have we got in here? Backup and restore content from these locations. All the data will be stored within your Microsoft environment. So we've got backup policies here, and we've got restoration tasks, and we can set up our policies here for SharePoint, Exchange, and OneDrive. Okay, so let's start with SharePoint. I'm gonna go in and set up my policy. What do we want to do here? By creating this policy, you'll be protecting the SharePoint sites added. We can uh, see our backup frequency. A recent 14 days equals every 15 minutes. Post 14 days to one year will be weekly. The backup retention is going to be one year. Now, this is the important part. We need to be very, very mindful of the cost. So let's open that up and take a look at the costs for Microsoft 365 backup billing. And we have a pricing calculator that you can uh, use here. And you can download the latest version of it and get all the information you need about backing up. Uh, and the usage. So take a look at that and make sure you're comfortable with what it's going to cost you. Okay, so let's go for next. Okay, our protection scope. 
select the sites that you want to protect under this policy. So we can add via search, or we can add via rules, or we can import from a file. Lots of good ways to uh, add the sites that we want to be in our protection scope. So we can go here and we can uh, uh, choose uh, what we want from there. I might do it that way, but let's just briefly look at what uh, these options do for us. So, oh, I see. So we can uh, put in examples and separate them by commas, site name or URL contains, site last modified, okay, and we can choose the last seven days or the last 30 days, uh, three months or last six months. Amazing. Or we can browse to upload our CSV file here as well. And you can download a handy CSV template that you can use to upload your sites. I will just go for the, the, the easy way and select a few sites here. So I will just go ahead and put marketing team and uh, MS 500 second edition. I'll just do a one or two uh, different sites there that has a bit of content in. Oh, that's a quite a meaty one. Cloud conversations. Those were the days. Okay. Add four. Let's add four. And there we go. And I can view my selected sites. There we go. And if I click on them, I can remove them if I want to. Excellent. Let's go next. So I've got four sites included and my backup frequency selected and my backup retention. Create the policy. Okay. Adding sites to the policy and activating your SharePoint backup policy is created. Policy updates typically take around 15 minutes for about 1,000 sites to come into effect, and you can manage the protected SharePoint sites and their policy status on the policy page. Cool. Let's click on Done. So there we are. That is one selected all ready for SharePoint, and wonderful. So... What does that do for us? We can uh, now from here view the scope of that and on the flyout panel, it uh, tells us all about that, the activity, last modified, the frequency and period of the backup, the included sites, and we can add sites right from here on this flyout panel, which is very quick and convenient. We can see the status of that is processing at the moment. So we'll check back shortly when that is finished and then see what sort of restore uh, options that we have. Let's view the details, and uh, that again just uh, does the same as view scope by the looks of it, which gives you some information uh, and the included sites. Wonderful. Okay, let's take a look at Exchange and OneDrive. I imagine OneDrive will be very similar to SharePoint, but how does it look from an Exchange point of view? Uh, let's have a look at backing up our critical Exchange user mailboxes, which is going to include emails, notes, contacts, calendars, and tasks. Wonderful. The frequency of this is every 10 minutes. The backup retention is one year. Again, so let's click on next. And we can choose our user mailboxes that we want to back up. Uh, we can add via distribution lists and security groups as well. So we can uh, look for those. Uh, and we can make multiple selections here. So we could add uh, DLs or security groups there that we, that we know that we want to add. And again, we can upload CSV. Uh, and download a handy template which is pre-prepared for us and we can put all our details in. Now we've got some common errors to avoid here for Exchange. We can upload up to 10,000 users per CSV file. Each user must have a unique username and email address. Each user cannot use accent marks. Email addresses cannot begin or end with a period or as we would say in the UK, a full stop. The part of the email address before the at symbol can have 64 characters or less, and username email addresses may only use letters, numbers, and the highlighted special characters here, such as like exclamation mark or hash sign or pound key, as you would say in the US, uh, and an up chevron and a tilde. I do like the word tilde. Okay, wonderful. So I will choose user mailboxes here, and let's take a wee look. I will go ahead and select my own email inbox. It would be nice here if it told me the size of that mailbox. I, I'm selecting myself deliberately because I, I actually do use this email address and it's going to be quite a, a weighty mailbox. Uh, so let's go ahead. Uh, here is our review and finish. And 
I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and create that policy and activating that backup policy and we are done. Uh, amazing. So let's have a little, little look and okay, active, no longer processing on SharePoint, but processing away on our exchange user mailboxes. Wonderful. Let's just quickly go through the OneDrive one. I imagine it's going to be very, very similar to the uh, SharePoint one. So again, you can choose accounts, uh, you can choose uh, distribution lists, security groups, upload the CSV and uh, review and finish. So I won't do a OneDrive one. I think uh, it's enough to demo this via SharePoint and via Exchange. So let's take a little look at what we've got now in terms of restore options now that the SharePoint one has done its job. So I waited a few hours before coming back to try this restore process because I needed to go back in time and obviously I'd just done it. So I gave myself about four hours and now I'm coming back to take a look at the restore. So let's start with the SharePoint restore. Uh, we can click onto the restore button and as you can see, it's a sort of generic restore wizard where you can actually choose the three different content types for restore, but in this particular instance, we want to restore SharePoint site contact. So we'll go for next. I will click to add the sites that are available to me for restore. I will select this site here, the MS 500 second edition. I could select all of them if I wanted, but I'll just select this particular one. I will click on add. And now I need to select it for restore. Okay. I will click on to next and now I need to select the closest backup before the specified date and time will be selected. So I'm going to select my time zone, which is uh, Dublin, Edinburgh, Lisbon, London, that's UTC. I'm going to select today's date, which is the 19th of January. And I started recording this video and I created the backup very early uh, this morning around uh, 830 my time. So I am going to uh, go forward and I'm going to ask for a restore point earlier than 1pm, which is around the time it is now. So click on next and it searches for the closest restore point. And we can see here we've got our site name, we've got standard restore selected there, we've got our site URL and a restore point of 1pm. Wonderful. We could go back further than that, I would have thought, but anyway, there we go. So I will select that. Uh, it gives you an option there to select a different backup if there's more on the list that you wanted to choose. And I will click on to next. And here we have some really great options. So we can restore to the original site. And in that instance, the whole site is replaced by the back end version or the backed up version, sorry, of the site. The site permissions are reverted to how they were at the selected date and time. So um, that's all good. There's an informational alert here which says that if you accidentally delete important content while replacing the entire site, you can restore it to the latest version to recover that lost data. We have another option here. So this top one is going to restore it in place where it is or, or, or where it was if you've accidentally deleted the whole site and you can't get it back. Or what you can do here is you can copy the content that you want to new sites to restore them, which is really cool. So you can do an in-place restore or restore to a different location. Fantastic. So you're almost there. Uh, take a moment to verify the details you've selected. This restoration can't be canceled after it starts, but when it's done, you can restore data to a different available restore point. So we've got our SharePoint sites to restore, one site, our destination, create a new site and restore. Interestingly, it's not giving me so far the choice to name that site. Perhaps it's going to generate that itself and name it in its own way. So let's click on restore sites and take a look. Okay, restoration task is created and we can track and monitor that on the restoration tasks page. When the task finishes, the backed up version of the site will be copied to the new site. You can view the new URLs on the details panel of the restoration task. Wonderful. Okay. So there we are. Uh, it's immediately taken us into restoration tasks here. And 
If we scroll down, we can see, there we go, it is in progress. Uh, okay, can we click onto that to get any more information? Uh, we can, it doesn't seem to do much more than that, so uh, we will need to leave that for a few moments and come back to it when it has completed. Okay, so the job has completed. It took a little while to do so. I started it at 1.33 p.m. It completed at 2.26 p.m. The reason for that being that uh, that particular site that I chose is around about eight gigabytes in size. So let's have a look. Let's click onto the job and get some metrics and indicators on what has happened. So here we go, the scope, the restore point, the destination, when we've got a name given to it, which is MS500 second edition RO. So it's got a couple of letters on the end. It looks like we can go straight to the site from, from here and we can see what is in there. And yeah, that's, that's exactly what I would expect to see in this particular site. Uh, I've got the general channel in there. I've got lots of chapters. This is from a book I wrote a couple of years ago. Lots of good content, all restored into a different uh, site, which is really good. But you could have restored it to the same site in place. In the SharePoint Admin Center, what does that look like? Let's take a little bit of a look. And if we search for MS 500, we can see here we have now got uh, two different sites. We've got the original one still in place. We've got the new one. So that's brilliant. It gives us the uh, ability to restore it somewhere else, have a look, see what it is, and then we can copy and merge and whatever else. Lots of great options indeed. So how about an exchange mailbox restore? Let's take a look at that. Okay, so if we go back into the backup policies tab, let's select exchange restore. And immediately it knows that we want to do an exchange mailbox content restore. If we click on next, add user mailboxes, and we get a list of mailboxes to restore. I only selected my own, so I can click that there, add it. I can click on next again. And once again, I need to select a few hours, uh, the closest backup before the specified date and time. So I'll go for my time zone again. I'll go for this current date and I will go for, again, I'll choose, well, I'll choose 1.30 p.m. now because it's a little bit later. So um, actually you do get the option here to do all emails, notes and calendars and tasks, or there's a selected content only here that you can choose. So uh, past set hours, uh, you can add filters into here. Email from has attachments, subject has the keywords, email sent to. So there's some nice options there. Amazing. Uh, and if I switch back, it's remembered my settings, which is wonderful. Let's see what the restore point options are uh, set to. So here we go. Just select that mailbox, select next. And again, I have the option to restore in place, replace the current version, overwrite that, or restore to a new folder. And this will restore to a newly created folder called recovered items within that mailbox, which is absolutely brilliant. So I can go ahead, finish that. It'll go through the same process. I, I won't do that this time because uh, it'll take some time because my mailbox, like that SharePoint site, is quite large, but the process is going to be much the same. So you get the idea. Wonderful stuff. So there you go. What do you think? I'm really quite impressed with that as a, a first pass look at this new technology within the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I'm going to say that uh, it'll probably develop and grow and get more granular features as it uh, as it expands and develops. But uh, I don't think at the moment the Druvers and Veeams of this world will be too concerned about their market share. I think uh, they've been well placed for a long, long time. But it's nice to see Microsoft finally step into this uh, space and provide a native backup and restore solution. I like how you're able to uh, restore to uh, the in-place locations and also to an alternative location. That's uh, that's really nice. Uh, there could be a bit more granularity in being able to drill down and select specific items, but um, lots of promising things within there. As with a lot of Microsoft features, I would always caution you about the costs that you could find yourselves being billed for with this sort of uh, technology. So watch out for that. Do be mindful about that. Uh, but 
Great start, really enjoyed playing with it. I like what I see so far, very, very simple and intuitive. Let me know what you think. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. That'll help me so much, and if you've not already done so, please also hit the subscribe button just down there. It takes a second to do it, and it's gonna help me so much, you have no idea. Right, let's wind things up for another video. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.